before we dive into this week's episode, I want to tell you about the sponsor. It is my signature group program, the Self Leadership Success Sanctuary. And this is the program for entrepreneurs who are just feeling stuck. They are maybe having a hard time finding the confidence to get started. Uh, They might have some clients who kind of push boundaries and uh, get them in that people-pleasing mindset that they want to let go of. This program is designed to help get the reins back in your hands because you deserve to dictate where your business is going. So in this three month group program, we'll have bi-weekly every other week meetings with your personal cheerleaders, other entrepreneurs who are right there with you. We'll go over things like limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, and we'll eventually graduate with learning how to celebrate ourselves. So I'm offering a special bonus to listeners. Be sure to book an enrollment call and save $400 off of the program. The last thing I want to say is that no one is going to achieve your dreams for you. So I've created this crew of positive, optimistic cheerleaders to be right by your side every step of the way. This is a safe place to try on your backbone, examine your self-sabotage, get clear with your intuition, and massively up-level your confidence, your business, and your bank account. I, I've been in that place of feeling out of alignment with comparison and not setting boundaries, and it's not fun. So consider what it's costing you to stay in that place of letting other people dictate what's best for your business. I will drop the link in the show notes for the episode, poppylead.com slash apply. Be sure to head over there, put in your application, and I will see you inside the sanctuary. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Confidently in Charge. I am Allison, and I'm so excited today to be joined by Jamie Ratterman, who is a coach and social media strategist, uh, helping entrepreneurs build community, brand awareness, and warm leads without the burnout. Um, She uh, also has health coaching certification as well and like really brings that into kind of the the holisticness of running a business Uh, and so I'm super excited to have this conversation. Um, She has a phenomenal group program that actually just kicked off uh, and she hosts some of my most favorite events, uh, which are the content sprints. Uh, you, if you follow me on Instagram stories, you know, I'm obsessed. I go to them. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever missed a day, a sprint day, like since they started in July, like every time you have. they've think, been offered. I think, I think I've you've been like, in every one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I love them. That's how, that's how important they are to me. But Jamie, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm like I I know so much about you from coming to the sprints, but I love being on a, your podcast and getting to know all the ins ins and outs of what you do. Yeah, and it'll be exciting to to learn, um, you know, some of your story and you know hear about that. So let's let's dive in to kind of your your story a bit um, with entrepreneurship. Um, you've got some really cool things you're doing. You have I know kind of a variety of interests between like you know, social media pillars and getting like that kind of stuff out there while also being mindful of health and all of that. So, you know, let's just start with you and entrepreneurship. Like, did you always know that you wanted to be an entrepreneurship, like set up that journey for us a little bit? It's so funny. Cause I would say that I, if you would have asked me, I would probably have said no, like I'll, I'll work my way through programs. Like in general, when someone asked me about my entrepreneurship journey, I realized how much I like fell into entrepreneurship. I actually um, started my career working corporate side, corporate side marketing. I worked with an Henry Bendel, TripAdvisor, and uh, just larger companies like that, running their social programs and working with like those huge teams and all of the above. But in that in that time, I was working a lot, and I ended up leaving it, leaving a job for the fact that I had no time to apply to another, and I just I was like I was getting you know, burnout. I wanted, I wanted something new, but I even, even within that, it was, I think at that point I was pulling about 70 hour weeks. No, no, no trouble in there of, of, of hitting that. And my, my boyfriend at the time would remind me like, 
do they pay you to work Saturdays and Sundays? And I'm like, I mean, it's salary, sure, I guess, like whatever it might be. So I was, I was working a lot. So when I, when I left without a job, I, my whole idea was that I was going to take care of myself, but you know, be applying to jobs, that type of thing. And I just wasn't finding things that jive well with me at the time. I was like, oh, I'm going into another thing of work where I got to do all the things, or I have to, you know, be almost like an octopus doing a whole bunch of different options and for for a company because there was there was a lot of companies that wanted their social media uh, strategist to be the manager, to be their email marketer, to be all of the things, and it's just. It was, I could see that every interview I went on going like, wow, I got to do it all. I'm going to be doing it all here again. I'm going to go right back into that 70 hour work week. So for me, um, thankfully I had a wonderful network and I had some people reach out to me while I was looking for full-time work saying like, oh, I actually have someone who needs your help. I have someone who needs your help. And that was kind of how I started doing a little more consulting work. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to go back to corporate. I don't think I want to do that. So that was the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey, but, uh, the, the more I've done this is the more I've realized that I really want that one-on-one interaction with entrepreneurs trying to build their marketing for themselves for sure. That's so, oh my gosh, what amazing foresight that you had to be in those interviews and say like, wait a second, I know where this is going. And that's, that's not what I want. That's not the, I don't need that 70 hours. I want nights and weekends. I deserve those things. Um, so you know, it sounds like it sort of just developed for you and and was that next step on your path that you kind of took. So how has that experience, you know, been for you so far? Like, you know, smooth sailing, what kind of lessons have you learned as you've shifted to this consulting kind of coaching direction rather than being in a corporate world? I mean, let me be very clear. When I was offered full-time gigs and I I was like, I want to say no. I'm going to say no. Like I was, I was, I was having a full, like, I, I want to say no. Should I say no? Like I had to definitely like, like feel, I felt like the more comfortable choice in the, some of those scenarios were to just choose the thing. But I think within that too, being burned out, feeling unhealthy informed me that like, that like I would rather preserve my, how I feel about myself than to like really prove to this corporate, uh, these corporate companies to make things happen for them. So within that, like, I think, um, health has always been something that's a part of my life, but like the, the even learning when I'm my most unhealthy as to when I am. And I think entrepreneurship for me was, was, um, the fact that like being your own boss, you get to be the person that allows you to either have a really healthy relationship with your job or a really, a really crappy relationship with your job. So that within, within that, I think entrepreneurship allows that without having to feel like you're, playing to what someone else needs from you or that kind of thing. Because I think, um, within, within what I've learned within what I do is that like, if I don't treat myself well each day, I'm not going to be doing my best work. So that was like one of my biggest lessons, but I would say in the last couple of years, specifically in the, like I've been doing this for five years now in the last three years, um, really realizing that I don't like, loanpreneurship is not cool. Do not ever do things alone just because like, I know a lot. I know I have a lot of information that I can give to somebody, but having sounding boards that come from accountability buddies, coaches who really are invested in your success, um, even just being amongst groups of other entrepreneurs, like that type of side that is like taking the pressure off me to be like, oh, I didn't hit those goals. It must be something wrong with me where if you just are vulnerable and can share in a group setting, you're, it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like that's exactly, that's like, like, Oh, everyone else feels this way. This is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like ups and downs that um, come with entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and having other people are really helpful. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I think back to my own journey when I was first in San Francisco and I had that whole idea of like, Oh, it has to be perfect before I tell anybody or like, they're going to steal my ideas and like that really intense culture. I mean, in San Francisco, it is very like tech, like we have to get there first kind of thing. And that rubbed off on my own approach to my business. So I love, you know, talking about like, have other people around, see other people, you know, seeing others rise and fall inspires us and encourages us to keep going. Um, So you touched on a little bit on becoming your own boss and like kind of the, the piece of 
you know, a lot of people get into entrepreneurship that way and like want that for themselves. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes we don't always realize like what all that means, um, you know, the accountability and all of that. So as you've learned to become your own boss, you know, can you break down that journey for us? Like, do you have rituals that you use to check in with your business or like, how are you kind of, how are you the boss for yourself? Ah, okay. Well, um, I would say being my own boss, there's so many things I'm like, oh, I could, oh, I could unload on a lot. So I think when it first started out was that really like time management of being your own boss is a really big piece. I think, um, you know, the nine to five is certainly something I guess that works for some people and I, and there's not, there's no shame against it, but like for me, like I've, I try trying to keep with that time schedule was really difficult for me at the beginning where I would work nine to well, nine to eight. Like I was a recovering overworker. Like I, so like in general, like it was very easy for me to like fall into those habits where I just never turned off my computer. So now like the freedom with being my own boss is that sometimes my best creative work is seven to 10, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then I take a long two hour break to get a workout in or doing whatever I want. Like in general, being my own boss, that time management piece allowed me to realize that I have like, it, how does my energy work through the day? Not how does the nine to five work for me? That kind of thing. I think that was, that was a really big one. And I think what comes with that is self-discipline to like, if you don't have a boss, that's kind of watching what you're doing or, you know, I've, I've had a few micromanagers in my life, but, but even too, like, you know, people and deadlines, like you have creating deadlines for yourself is a whole different story. Like, it's just like, it's a whole different story. Like one, it, one, it has to do with like, are you self-honoring and the fact that like, are you prioritizing what you need for yourself or what you, like, if you had this done in time, like, how is it going to make you feel for all the other tasks on your, on your list? Or are you prioritizing somebody else over what you need for it? Like there's, there's so many aspects of deadlines that I feel like are understood in an office setting where when you're, when you're your own boss, it's like you're, you're working against some internal beliefs about yourself as well. So it's kind of there, there's all of that. I'm trying to think of it. There's so, there's so many, um, but for me, for me, when, I, when I feel like I've become and thrived as my own boss, it's, it's like, I have defined boundaries, like very defined boundaries of when mm-hmm. I do what type of work. So like for me currently in these change, like my creative work is in the morning, like, I, I ha- like getting through e- like my email newsletters, my social posts, all that stuff is getting done in the morning and my meetings are all afternoon. And that's just my way of making sure I'm preserving when I'm going to do my best work. And also when someone asks me for a 10 a.m., like I have the choice to tell them like I'm busy because I need those options or I need to make sure I, I give myself that time. But also I know I know that if I give some give that away to somebody that I'm missing out on on making sure like I'm staying in, ahead of what I would need to do. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. Like that awareness of allowing your day to be what feels good. Um, and also, you know, within that, having the discipline of saying like, okay, but I actually do need to get this done today. Like, yeah, I, you know, self-care feels great. And, you know, there are days when we, we have to also learn to walk that line of like, do I need the rest or am I avoiding? And there's so many things, um, all tucked into that, that journey of being your own boss, but I love, Um, So much of what you shared there. So can you share a little bit too with us about kind of the challenges that come up in entrepreneurship? Like we all have those things where, you know, the launch didn't go as planned. I'm sure in your world with social, a lot of times, you know, you put effort into a piece of content and then like, you know, it doesn't land the way you expect. So when those challenges happen, you know, we as entrepreneurs don't have that boss, like we've talked about, to help us get through those challenges. Um, how do you bring yourself through that? I mean, I think if anyone is going to work through challenges with an entrepreneurship, they have to have a fantastic relationship with failure. And the, there's there's a there's failure in your productivity. There's failure in how many people you wanted in your group. There's like something, something that you put your heart, heart and soul into ended up just not, you know, falling flat, whatever it might be. And I think that failure is like a necessity to your success instead of a feeling of um, like, you're not like, you shouldn't be doing this. And I think um, for me, the, the challenges most with entrepreneurship is 
really taking the teeth out of failure where it's just like, it's not like, oh, there's something wrong with me. Somebody else is doing this better than me. Like there's, there's so many things that come up when you, when you, something doesn't work well for you. So I think um, for me, I, I'm definitely like a, rec- I, I'm working through it. I'm a recovering like productivity. Like I, like if, I, if I can get 10 things done in a day, like my, my, my value is attached to that. I'm recovering. I'm like, I'm working on it. Mm-hmm. So like kind of working through some of those, those uh, stories that you tell yourself about, if I don't get this many people in this sprint this week, that means that no one likes this. Like, nope, nope. Like how, how can I adjust my promotion the next time? So I think for me, the biggest things that have come from it is that if I really feel particularly hurt by something that didn't work well, I go, what, what went well here? So what, what went well in what way? What didn't go well? And like, and like when I say that, it's like, what's, that has nothing to do with like, what, like what's wrong with me. It's more like, what didn't go in the, well in this scenario and how can I improve upon it the next time? So it, it, I, within that, I love to dial, dial down, down into like, you know, the logistics, the technical side, mm-hmm. but also what was happening energetically for me where, you know, like if I felt like a little bit desperate for so, so like certain people mm-hmm. to jump in or if I felt like I needed, like I wasn't, like people weren't liking my stuff as much as I need to. Like where was that energy coming from internally where mm-hmm. if I switch it going like, like, any moment that I ever feel like a, I hope people see this is like, I'm serving people. I know, I know what I'm giving is going to elevate impact um, and impact other people's lives in a really positive way. It's just a matter of finding the crowd to come to you. So I think for me, the, the biggest things that I always, when it comes to challenges with entrepreneurship is that three, those three questions, what went well, what didn't go well, and what can I do better for the next time and making sure I execute on those, what can go better for the next time so that I'm, uh, I, I kind of like to say that there's like, there's like this dip, of course, like you see with entrepreneurship, but as long as you're, the dips are getting a little higher and a little higher, like you're, you're like, you're not going d- down to like the deep down the, that's going to be really helpful in that way. Yeah. Mm, I love s- mm, what you just said. I realize I always say, I love that you said that, like, <laughs> that's totally one of my podcast hosting things. So if you're a listener, I'm so sorry if that drives you nuts. I'm working on it. Um, I love that you love what I say. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, I'm, I'm working on it, but I really appreciated your bringing up of the energy with it and kind of like, I think sometimes we get in that like, oh, nobody liked it. I must have posted it at the wrong time, which like, yeah, that could be true. But it's also like, are you resonating with the message that you're sharing? Or are you like secretly, you know, sabotaging yourself because you're not in alignment with it? And so I love that you kind of bring that aspect into it too of like, how am I feeling? Like, you know, how am I doing? And then using it more as a lesson to learn and like a way to make yourself better that's such a superpower to take like a failure that most people would be like oh this is a sign that I shouldn't be doing this and rather being like oh this is a sign that I'm learning how to do better um such a great attitude to take um so you know talking about that energy and talking about kind of you know the transitions that we make I know that you believe in the power of coaching and, um, you know, as a coach who works with people and talking about like, you know, sometimes it's not just posting at the right time. It's also vibing with what you're sharing and everything. Um, you know, you just joined this awesome program I know. And so I'm just curious, you know, why, why do you invest in yourself like that? And like, what is kind of the purpose behind, uh, you know, taking care of yourself in that way? Um, everyone needs someone in their corner. Like it's all like everyone always needs someone in their corner because even on my best days, I'm going to still be a little harder on myself and having a coach is going to be the person that not only like, like I like to say this a lot as, as me as a coach for somebody else, I'm invested in seeing you do well. Like I'm not like, so that's going to be something that helps me. I need, I want something like that for me. I've had three different coaches at this point. I started with uh, Emily Merrill, who uh, with one-on-one coaching, which she's fantastic and has helped me build out the sprints the, the, themselves. I did a group program um, with Jess, Jess Glazer and built out Marketing Mastery in that way. And then I just started uh, Jackie Simic's Magnetize, which is going to help me elevate all of my processes. And that's what, literally what, the, what it, what's going on with that. What's really funny about it is like for me, like I, I absolutely... I'm a researcher. I, I, I take the classes. I do the things I like, I create, 
I create templates and routines and all the things. So like I, in my past life, I would think that like, okay, I can always figure this out. I'll figure it out by myself. But the moment that I was able to ask for help with coaching is that they like, they're going to be the ones that like, don't waste your time on that. Like, this is where it's going to make you money or this is where it's going to get your, your voice out to other people. Um, or like, okay, you're, you're falling into perfectionism here. Let's take some messy action and push and push it this way. So like, there's, there's so many pieces of that. And also for me, because I've done all this research, I think I know a lot of things and I need someone to aggravate me a little bit. So I'm like, <laughs> like, like, like you're thinking in the way that you always think this, try something brand new. And, and like in my mind, like, no, they don't know what they're talking about. And then I try it and I'm like, okay, this is how I would do it. Okay. Now I get it. I tried something that's out of my comfort zone and I think that's essentially what coaches are they're the people that are going to pull you out of your comfort zone every single time to make sure that you're not just like resting in status quo you're moving you're moving forward in a in a in a way that's rewarding yeah ooh, so powerful they are yeah those blind spot navigators those people who will challenge you gently um but this reminds me too of something that you said a little bit earlier uh around not attaching like the success of a post to your worth personally. And I feel like coaches also, and you kind of hinted at it too, like coaches really help with that process of like helping you move past that sometimes. So um, there are definitely times when we pull ourselves out of those lulls, uh, but it's helpful to have a coach who can be there to do that with you. And like you said, you know, prod a little bit, ask the questions, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's as a coach, I'm always like, I have to make sure not to just do it to people in like normal conversation. I'm like, I could ask a really challenging question right now, but I want to, you know, honor that that's, we're just having a conversation. Um, but yes, coaching is super powerful. And I know um, that you recently sort of added this new wave of coaching to your offerings, to your business. Um you were, I remember last year, you know, you were working on homework and everything, getting your, your health coach certification, and now you are officially certified. So, you know, how does that, yeah, yay, celebrate me. How does that impact kind of the social media work that you do with the entrepreneurs you work with? Like, how do you meld these together? I have always been a little bit health obsessed. Like I'm the kind of, like i when someone asks me my favorite book, I think people think I want to say a marketing book and I do have those, but I will tell them like five health related books. And I think, um, for me, there's a number of reasons why it's really important. Um, in the past, um, it was like a big reason why I left corporate was I was just unhealthy. Like I was, I was my unhealthiest when I left my job. I was, you know, had a couple of extra pounds. I was working, working nonstop and just like feeling brain fried all the time. And in general, all of those pieces were the reason why I decided to become an entrepreneur. So like, I was like, how can health be a part of, be a part of a business journey? Aside from that, two years ago, this, uh, two years ago, um, this year, I actually lost my dad. Uh, he was about to retire. He was about to retire in that process. And I, and I think that um, with him, like he was like a very happy go lucky person, but he would always put things off until he retired. Like he would, even his coffee, he would make it, he made a joke at one point that he's like, he's like, I'll drink the good coffee when I retire. Like he, he was, did that instant Folgers, that kind of thing. And when it comes down to it, we are going to always spend 30 to four, 30 plus hours on our businesses every week or every week. So why not have health and in, health incorporated in that so that you have not only purpose in your business, you have purpose in your health and thriving in your health. So that was for me, when I was deciding to become health coach certified, I had my dad in my mind. I, I had how I wanted my future of how I used my career in my mind. And I think that um, I am vehemently, vehemently against hustle culture, even if I fall into it all the time. So I think that was the biggest part of what made me want to become a health coach, um, for sure, as, a, as an additional certification. Wow. That's such a an impactful story, um, you know, about your dad and kind of shifting to like 
oh, have the good coffee now. And like, don't put off waiting and don't, you know, hustle in your job to live for the weekend kind of thing. Um, so I love that you bring that in. Um, and I know one of the main ways that you work with clients and that you encourage yourself to work is by kind of batching your creative energies and like totally. just having some awareness around which is part of the reason that I love content sprints so much. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would love to talk a little bit about those if we could, um, cause they are one of my top picks and like most okay. favorite things. Um, so, you know, tell us a little bit about the sprints and about kind of the health benefits of batching your work in that way and kind of, um, you know, how those can be beneficial and how we can join them. That's kind of a long question, but take it away. <laughs> For sure. I mean, first, like with when it comes to the way you treat yourself and health, it's it's you're trying to prolong your brain power that like your, your mental performance is how like your daily habits, like the, how you treat yourself each day is going to allow you to d have your best mental performance. So like that, that's that's kind of the goal when it comes to kind of like daily routines, different aspects of that. Batching is the fact that like we, I think I, I, I want to say I saw a new statistic, but like we make over 10,000 decisions every day. Some, most are subconscious, but essentially like how can you get your best work? And so that you don't have to make as many decisions as you normally do. So batching means that you do a particular type of work at all at the same time and you remove distractions. So within that, like within the sprints, the, where I'm asking everyone to do their marketing, their social, most of the time it's Instagram content because that is the most time consuming platform. But like you are spending that time brainstorming how you're going to show up for your audience for the next 30 days. And it's on average, people get through three weeks of content because they turn off their phones or they get rid of that distraction. Um, and they're able to only focus on that. So aside from the distraction pieces, we're all like, we're, we've, we've all become a more distracted society in general so there uh, but there's this, there is another piece of that where every time you get distracted it takes around seven minutes for you to get back on task so the idea that you think you can write out social content check your instagram to see if someone's responded to you watch something on tv like this idea of multitasking it's just it's a it's not i want to say horseshit i don't know if i can just curse on this <laughs> it's all but in general like the that you're wanting to remove that brain fatigue so I, uh, within batching and Pomodoro, which is the technique that we use within the content sprints, is that you should be taking a you should be taking a at least five minute break every hour. And I think that I'm I'm I need that timer sometimes because I will continue working through. But that that five minute break should be away from your computer. So aside from your eyes, you know, give your eyes a break. Uh, your brain is not supposed to be flexed at all times. Like the, I, I know your brain is an organ, but treat it like a muscle. If you're flexing it constantly, give it a, give it a full on break so that you can come back with fresh ideas. It's really funny when you make breaks a really big part of your day. It's when you walk away, you're able to think of the solution that you were looking for versus I think what's now normal where you just stare at your screen until you figure it out and you're like, this isn't going to work. So that's, that's a big part of it too. But as you know, within the sprints, I incorporate breath work and I incorporate some exercise. So breath work, we're activating our parasympathetic nervous system. So we find our, we refine our calm and then are able to get refocused and to continue through. And then uh, the workout piece of it, which is always a simple workout with some, with some good tunes, usually provided by Allison, um, is, is that any, from five to 20 minutes, if you just get your, your blood, um, your blood pumping, you can be more creative and solve problems more easily. So we're just trying to grab a piece of that so that whenever you're finishing out the sprint, you have the ability to like, you know, get that last surge of energy to make sure you finish out whatever you've started in the, in the first uh, two hours or so. Mm, yes. They, oh, they're so productive for me. Like I, I go in and I know like, okay, I'm focused on this for the next little bit. I've got do not disturb on my phone is tucked away. I have my playlist going and like, you know, I can hit up Jamie if I have questions about how to do something on social or best strategies or anything like that. So it's super helpful because I have kind of this like social 
atmosphere going on while I'm doing something that otherwise is just kind of me sitting alone in my room, staring at a laptop. Uh, so it's fun to, to have other people around. Um, but my favorite to... part of this friends is that I get to know everybody's business a little bit. And like, really what you're like with you, you're like launch when you launch something and I'm like able to be like, Oh, tease it out this way. Like mm-hmm. you like bring your email in that way. Like I, every single one of those printers, I know, I know a piece of their business by the time they leave. And I think that's always what's really nice and helpful for me is kind of uh, like, uh, aside from being their most productive, using health as a, that, that backbone, I'm able to really get to know them. And it's, you, you think that it's like, uh, like you think when you leave the sprint, I'm done talking to you. And I'm like, I get to like, wh- when is that coming along? How does that all work? So I really enjoy it. Yeah. There's like that baked in accountability of like, you you know what's happening and I'm I'm telling you like hey I'm launching a thing next week and so suddenly it's like sweet yeah send me the post and so you know we have that uh, open communication that's so helpful um but I have loved getting to know kind of your entrepreneurial journey and story of how you got here um and I loved the commentary around coming into being your own boss and holding yourself responsible um that plays really nicely with the fact that I kind of believe that leadership is the culmination of the choices that we make every day and the ways that we choose choose ourselves and show up for ourselves. Um, So I want to ask about that a little bit for you. Um, What are some of the non-negotiable ways that you show up for yourself, you know, daily? What are the non-negotiables for you? I mean, my morning routine is pretty sacred. So I, I do at least 10 minutes of meditation. Uh, Headspace is my current favorite. Um, I journal. Uh, go figure. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm always a word, words person first. So I, I have journals on journals on journals from years, years past. But in general, every day, I, whatever, whatever is just like on my mind is, is definitely how I reflect. And then I'll usually get through a book in that time. But like my morning routine is, is definitely very sacred movement is a huge piece of it like i i like to say that i can't afford not to get exercise in my day like now that sometimes can ebb and flow between i might just get a walk in versus like a good a good strength training or r- routine but in general like it's the if i don't get a workout in i can feel it in my work like i know it's not there and like it's just not i need i need those pieces um and then yeah the the third the third piece is is like i know that I perform better when I have like meal prep in the fridge for sure. So like, so uh, when I think about taking breaks for lunch or dinner or whatever it might be, is it, that'll be where I go. I don't need to rush through cooking. I like, I, this is, this is my time to like, Oh, I separately feel a stress. Like I reduce stress from the fact that when I chop vegetables, it's like, it's my form of therapy. Just like mm-hmm. chopping through some vegetables are usually a nice form of therapy for me, but also just feeling like I'm not rushing through feeding myself can be a really, uh, is really important to me. So I have, I have many non-negotiables, but those would be mm-hmm. the first that come to mind. Love it. Yes. I, I want to acknowledge too, that I thought it was really cool. Your first two non-negotiables, it was like, your internal non-negotiable of like having that sacred time in the morning to, you know, connect to that part of yourself. And then there's sort of that very physical experience of like, okay, I'm moving my body. And then I love it. Nutrition kind of ties those two things together a little bit on the inside and the outside. Uh, And yeah, taking breaks is that's the thing that I've been talking about lately on my stories is just trying to, remind myself of the worthiness of doing that and like uh I love that about you know having lunch ready to go having dinner meal prepped chopping the vegetables and changing that into like this isn't wasted time that I could be doing something else this is actually therapeutic and pleasant and um appreciating that so amazing the last question I want to ask is how folks can stay connected with you. Where can we find you? And um, yeah, where can we find you? You can pretty much find me on all social media at, at Jamie Ratterman, one T, two N's. But uh, in general, like uh, the sprints, which I would be happy to have people come from the, from the podcast um, over to the sprints so they get to try it out for themselves. I host those three Wednesdays every month, usually the first, third, and fourth Wednesday of at 10 a.m. or 2.30. You can always find that in my Instagram, but um, uh, you can you can sign those up in my book now button, actually. But 
I wanted to also offer, and I'll give this to you, I have a free little mini course. So it's a three steps to 30 days of content. So a mini version of what I kind of present and talk about as far as the marketing side of things in the sprint so that uh, people can start to build out their pillars, who their audience is, that type of thing. Love it. I'm pretty sure I did that like three steps, like the day you sent it. <laughs> like, I think it came through the email list and I downloaded it and was like, oh, these are such good questions. Um, just yeah. about, you know, who your ideal client is and what kind of messages you have for them. Um, I really love that approach to sort of like you help content not be this like nebulous sort of like, oh, I need to tell people about stuff. It's sort of like, yeah. And you have these, you know, forms in which you do it. And uh, so very wonderful. I will be sure to link that um, a link to that in the show notes and descriptions um, everywhere. But Jamie, any final words before I wrap us up? I mean, I think you answered so many. I got, I was, I was so excited to talk. I feel like I talked a lot about the health side of things and my entrepreneurship journey. I feel like I don't get asked as much about that, which I enjoyed, but I would definitely say if anyone is wanting to jump into entrepreneurship, know that there is a mandatory personal growth side of yes. it. And that if you, if you want to run your own business, you really need to see how you feel, what type of leader you are, how you treat yourself. All of those are baked in with your business strategies, your business tasks, all, all of the above. Mm. But I'm so, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed this conversation You're so welcome. much. Yes, this has been delightful. Ooh, a hundred percent seconding that entrepreneurship does have those tricky days and those challenges. Um, and I just want to hearken back to what you shared during the episode about you know, finding the community and finding the coaches and finding the support systems um, to be with you in that journey. But yeah, it is, it is a real part uh, that sneaks in. That's not always the glamour of, you know, giving yourself vacation days. There are some challenges that come along with, with the entrepreneurship. So thank you again, Jamie, for joining us on the show. And thank you listeners for tuning in. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast. Um, like this episode, subscribe to the show, whether you are joining us uh, on YouTube for the talk show or uh, on a, one of the podcast platforms. Um, we are so glad that you've joined us today and we will catch you next week.